afternoon. Uh, good to see everyone. Uh, good, good win uh, against a really a, a good football team uh, Friday. Uh, Samford did a really nice job defensively. Uh, you know, we tried to take advantage of some things that they had shown on film that uh, they had struggled with, and, and they did a good job adjusting and, and forced us to have to adjust at halftime offensively. Um, but you know, anytime we had 39 minutes time of possession. 65% conversion on third down. Um, I thought the, the sequence right before the half probably gave us a, a big boost. Uh, we got a, a stop defensively, got the clock stopped, actually tried to block the punt. Uh, I think he mishit it. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it was about a 20-yard punt. We had the ball midfield, got a big penalty, and, and Griffin Crosa banged a 44-yarder uh, with, with kind of an untimed down right there. And that was a huge play for us going into the half, knowing that. We were going to get the ball right back in the in the first first series of the second half, uh, and our offense did a great job going down, scoring a touchdown on that drive, and um, and then you know defensively, I think we had four or five three and outs uh, throughout the course of the game, uh, was something that you, if you watched film on Samford, didn't happen very often. Uh, they were a very prolific offense and did a really nice job, and um, you know minus probably that last series, I think we probably held them to a. Uh, or at least close to a season low yardage and points, uh, probably 250 yards or so. Um, but a good day in the special teams. Uh, we already talked about the big field goal. Uh, had the field goal block, had a big punt return that put us in a situation to, to score points. So again, uh, utilizing that side of the football, uh, you know, helping us win games. And got a, another <laughs> very difficult opponent this week. Uh, Incarnate Word comes in here. Um, probably the most prolific or at least productive player in FCS football. Uh, when you start looking at the number of touchdowns he's responsible for, what is it, thrown for 59 touchdowns, ran for nine um, in their quarterback. Uh, they have a running back that has 1,300 yards, a couple receivers that over 1,000. Uh, anyone who averages 50 points a game and 600 yards uh, is, is going to demand some respect immediately. And so it's going to be a uh, a challenge uh, to get to get stops. It's going to be a challenge to get them off the field. Uh, and then. You know, I think they got really good personnel. Uh, they play hard up front on the defensive line. They have some solid defensive linemen. Uh, their uh, middle linebacker, number eight, is a very good player. And uh, they're going to play a ton of ton of man uh, and bring pressure is, is what they've shown to do, or at least that's what their MO's been up to this point. Um, so uh, it'll be an exciting one. Um, they, they, they do a lot of good things, and you see why they uh, have been so successful. Uh, I'll open it up for questions. Seeing how Incarnate Word, you know, advanced with the 66 to 63 win in the quarterfinal, kind of what were your biggest takeaways from that, uh, from Incarnate Word in that game? They score a lot of points and they score really fast. Uh, you know, it, it felt like that, you know, one team or the other was was always a play or two away from, you know, getting a, a sizable lead and, and nobody ever could do that. Uh, I think you saw the quarterback make some plays. I mean, there was one play drives right after big returns. Um, and so explosive play, explosive football uh, is what I saw. Uh, and then they forced some turnovers as well uh, during the course of the game. But um, there's a lot of areas we need to make sure that we're, we're prepared for. And um, he can hurt you with, with either side, uh, with, with his legs or his arm. And defensively, they do enough, and, and they've just got enough of personnel that they'll create some negative plays. I mean, they got 40-plus sacks this year and um, seem to make a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage. As a quarterback, that's accounted for 68 touchdowns for the season. How do you even approach trying to contain somebody that, that as good as he is? Well, you know, by this time of the year, you really you do what you do. And so we just need to make sure that we do it really well and try to keep the ball in front of us, force them to drive the field. We can't give up explosive plays. Uh, if we can force them to kick some field goals, find ways to get the ball on the ground or uh, create a turnover or two, uh, th th that's where – you know, it, it's, it's not stopping the yards. The, the yards are going to happen. Uh, and we've had that conversation before. Uh, we got to keep them out of the end zone. We got to keep them from scoring touchdowns. Um, if they have 600 yards and uh, they, they, they can't score as many points as what they're accustomed to, that's probably uh, some level of success. Out of the extra day, have any injury update on Tameric or Nelson or Payton? E extra day. There, there was no extra day. We're, I mean, this is Tuesday to me right now. Um, so the, there's no extra days. Uh, everyone was at practice yesterday. Everyone's moving around. Some guys are in more of a rehab uh, phase. Other guys were uh, involved in practice. And so, again, it's day-to-day -day with, with a number of those guys.
You've been with your guys defensively, you know, uh, Montana game and then last week, and it feels like they stepped up to a new level when the playoffs started. Play, they're playing well. Um, we got to continue to do that. Uh, you get to this point of the season, you're going to play really good football teams regardless of, of, of where they're from. Or, and so we need, to, we need to stay healthy. We need to be opportunistic. Uh, the fundamentals got to continue to, to, to be at the, the top of the priority list. Uh, we got to be good tacklers. We got to keep the cup. Uh, we need to you know, play with, with really good fundamentals uh, if we want to be successful. Slower start last week in Sanford and only having a few points going nearly into the half. What can you do to have a stronger start just right out the gate against an incarnate word team? Well, that was one of the probably one of the first times in a couple weeks that we hadn't scored early on the on the first series. Um, you know, I, that's a good football team we played, so um, they did a nice job. Consistency, uh, communication up front, making sure. Uh, you know, that we know what we're doing in the run game, protection-wise, staying, staying out of some third longs, which I think we saw early in the half. Uh, we, we got behind the sticks a little bit. Um, you know, there was a uh, – we took a sack on a second down that, that threw us into a long third down. We, we, we cannot have penalties on third and two. Um, you know, so there, that was, you know, self-induced. You know, it wasn't anything that, uh, that our opponent did. We did that to ourselves. All of a sudden, third and seven becomes much more – uh, difficult of a situation. Then we didn't get the fourth down. Um, you know, we just didn't make a couple plays in some critical situations, the fourth down and the third down in particular, that could have ex extended those drives. And both of those drives, if I remember right, were, were near either the high red zone area. So we were, you know, on, on the opponent's side of the of the 50 and, and, and moving the ball. Uh, Tamara can't play this Friday. Obviously, TK Marshall might play an elevated role. I mean, what have you liked from TK this year, and how has he developed as a season's well, gone? TK's a really good football player, uh, and uh, he plays with a talented group. He understands what, he's his role so up to this point has been situational. Uh, we've personnelled him in quite a bit. Uh, as you see, he runs the ball very hard, but he's also a huge – a uh, piece of a, what we do special teams wise. Uh, he's on a number of special teams. So um, there's a reason why we recruited him. We thought he could be a running back for us. He does a great job. And um, I'm, I'm fully confident in, in TK will be able to handle any extra carries that, or, or even just reps for that matter. Activating a guy like Barica at all? Well, he's, he's, been, he's been banged up for the, probably uh, a number of weeks here, just kind of little things. So he, he, he's been with the. Uh, with the offense, uh, just you know, here are the last you know two weeks, when all of a sudden the NCAA limits you to 64, you you got to hopefully there's there's a little bit of you know mental gymnastics about how many how many running backs you want to have versus receivers and O linemen and defensively. So, um, but he's fully he's he's prepared. He understands the offense, and if if someone can't dress, then Barico would provide some depth. Any true freshman dressing? Uh you know, Kelton McCaslin potentially uh, could, and probably got to get through a little bit more of the pra practice this week. Lance had a sack last week. Obviously, a guy who's been kind of learning on the fly this year. What do you like with the way he's played right now, as compared to earlier in the year? Cole, Cole is Mr. Serious. Very, seldom smiles. Uh, when you do get him to smile, you know it's a, you must have had a good joke or something. But uh, he is—he's a super sharp kid, pre-med student. And just like you would anticipate, um, he, he is very detail-oriented. Uh, I don't think you can be in that major and, and, and not be involved with the details. But he just continues to get better confidence. More and more reps. Uh, Coach Gazer leaning on him. Coach Braun leaning on him to, to give us some critical snaps. I mean, he's playing anywhere between 12 and 15. I think he's been up to in the 20s. Uh, now with Tony back, you know, we can spread those out a little bit more. But um, he said – he. Him, Dylan, uh, have real, and, and then you go inside and talk about Cody and Jackson. Those guys have really elevated their play in the second half of the season. It's almost a bonus home game that you weren't counting on that, that you've got now for a trip to Frisco. Well, I, probably when the game was over on Friday, I didn't plan. I, I didn't know. Uh, all we knew, all we talked about a week ago was. You know, if, if we even want a shot to ever play, play at home again this year, we better take care of business on Friday. And all we can control was our game. And uh, I think we had a lot of players who stayed up and watched that one uh, just because they, they do enjoy playing here in the Fargo Dome and, and, and having the, you know, the ability to play one more here, especially for our seniors. Talking to Cody Mauk this week, it was, 
a little bit, you know, he kind of walked in my office and was like, man, that could have been my last game in the Dome. And I don't know if I appreciated it enough. Well, now you, now you get a chance to, to have truly some closure on, on especially the, the guys who are, who are seniors and um, going out with their last home game. The word was in Fargo was, what, 2014, just getting their program going yep. in Division I. Um, what's your impressions of their growth in, in the years since then? They've done a really good, a good job. As I, I mentioned earlier, they got tremendous personnel. Uh, I think their coaches do a great job of, uh, you know, of recruiting. Uh, you're in a hotbed there. Uh, San Antonio, you go north, you're, you're in the metroplex of, of Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot of talent down there, probably a number of kids that they, I, I haven't dove, dove into it, but I'm sure they have access to uh, some bounce-back kids as well. Uh, you know, they've been uh, very successful. What was their previous head coach? Was that Chad Morris, who's now at Washington State? I think he had them in the playoffs a couple times. Uh, you know, I think they, they've elevated their play. They've gotten better on the line of scrimmage. I think is something that you can see easily on film. Is Lindsey Scott comparable to either a Trey Roberson or even who you saw with Delora at Arizona? Is he a completely different player that you can coach? I, I don't. Want, I don't want to know if I necessarily want to compare. Uh, we played some really active quarterbacks who have huge arms and the ability to extend plays or hurt you with their feet. Uh, I would put him in that mix. Um, I'm not going to say one's better than the other right now, uh, but we, we have, um, over the course of, of my almost 10 years here now, we've played some pretty really good mobile quarterbacks that have caused us issues or have at least caused us some sleepless nights leading up to game day. Play, uh, Javier Derrick had two big sacks last week. Yep. Uh, Javier's another one. The, the consistency level, the, the ability to lean on him, playing more snaps. Uh, from the line of scrimmage, uh, just continues to to grow and develop. Uh, experience is something that is, is sometimes we don't realize or we don't want to acknowledge the v the value of it. And, and Javi now has played you know three years for us, going back to tw spring of twenty one last season. This year, um, really becoming more of a leader in that room. Uh, big, strong, physical. Uh, ha has some twitch to him, so very explosive player. Uh, we're going to need him to have a good day for us. A little bit on the redshirt freshman that you've had play, um, and just you mentioned it earlier, but how well that they've played, and it looks like they're confident from Butte and Happer over yep. to men's, and even um, when it when it comes to Heisman. Sure. Yeah, you're you're probably talking to mostly where our redshirt freshmen show up are going to be on the defensive side right now. Uh, Logan Cop would be another one that you could kind of throw into that mix. You know, I I, I think it. It's not easy being a Bison. Uh, there's a lot of demands, a lot of expectations. Uh, when you sh when you show up here, we. Ex Sometimes unfairly, we expect you to know everything, um, and sometimes we gotta, you know, back off a little bit as coaches. Uh, but Coach Gazer, Coach uh, Braun, Coach w Coach Watson, who helps with some of the, the the breakdown and stuff, those guys do a great job. You know, when when those guys are up in the meeting rooms, uh, getting them the information, going through, watching film, um, but you know, just repetition, 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 and. As a as an 18 19 year old, being willing to accept the repetition, um, you know it's football's not like any other sport. You're going to play one game a week, and you're going to spend more time practicing and emulating game scenarios than you do probably with any other sport. Um, you know, as long as you have a you know a deep pitching staff, you can play baseball six five six games a week. You can play basketball every single day, it seems like. Uh, you know, other sports included. Football is one of those where, you know, it, it's, it's one game a week, maybe, maybe two in ten days because of a, you know, maybe a, an, an off Saturday or off Sunday game. But uh, these guys have bought into what we're doing. They understand, they're, they're just their, their level of understanding has really improved. And um, they come to work every day ready to go. And I know they, you know, the veterans in, in those linebacker and, and and D-line rooms have done a good job too of, of helping those guys along the way. On signing day and semifinals before, what have you learned from that? What do you got to do? Priority number one is the sem is semifinals, uh, of course. Um, signing day is uh, next Wednesday, I believe. So we we've had a number of recruits on campus. We've had a balance, and and, and Ian does a, his staff do a tremendous job of balancing, you know, game day recruits, parents, logistics 
travel through town, getting them here, there, um, where he can, we, we take a lot of that off the, the assistant coaches and myself and allows us to be focused on you know, the task at hand, and that's the football game. And I, I think the re- we kind of give the recruits a heads up. It's going to be a little bit different coming to a game day, official visit versus uh, an official visit that there is no game. Uh, and the, rec- the young men that we recruit understand. They, they know we're going to pour into the guys that are currently on the team, and uh, I think they would want it that way too when they're here. Between the Sanford offense and the Incarnate Word offense, or are they quite a bit T- tempo wise? There is uh, some some route concepts are similar. Uh, some run game, you know, their inside zone is, is a big play, um, you know. But playing two tempo teams back to back will help a little bit. Um, I thought we did a good job defensively on Saturday, getting our cleats in the ground, getting our hands in the ground. Um, it, you'd be it, there might have been one snap where we weren't maybe aligned appropriately. Uh, but at least the communication piece was there. I felt like in the back end where you can give up some big explosive plays, um, our secondary was was on the same page probably 99% of the time. You see their nose tackle, the big kid, uh, I think it's Olivier Olivier Charles Pierre, sure. number Three, zero, it's 375. Big, big dude is what I see. Um, you know, and not a guy you're probably going to be able to move a whole bunch. And so probably will, will impact the game slightly just being out there, um, you know, where we run things, what what type of schemes we want to run to him, maybe how we want to run things away from him. But, uh, you know, guy that big and that active can can have an impact on the game. Okay. I mean, he looked like he's – I watched the game on Friday. Seems like he moves all right. I mean, I, I probably haven't studied him enough. I've probably looked more at what they're doing from a schematic standpoint. Okay. Have a good week. We'll see you Friday.